All right, it's just about a minute past. So uh, anybody who's running a little bit later to this, um, you know, are not sticking to the schedule. So uh, they actually probably need this, you know, more than more than they think. Um, thanks again for coming, and just wanted to say hello. Um, it's nice to meet you virtually. Of course, we can't do that uh, in person these days anyway. So it's good that we're having a, a, a situation like this, and that technology allows us to. Um, now I know everybody. Uh, has been going through a lot of changes these days since we're getting into the swing of things. Not everybody has, you know, worked from home before. Um, some people have, uh, you know, dreamed of this day and been, you know, very excited. So uh, we're going to cover the exciting things about it. Also, some of the pitfalls of working from home that you can succumb to. Uh, I've done it for a little while. Um, so we'll start with a little background about myself here. Um, and my name is Dave. I am the uh, technical sales engineer over here at Weavy. I help you know, build proofs, proof of concepts for prospective clients, um, help onboard them. I love to play video games. I love dogs and my dog, as you can see here, he's got uh, a little bit of uh, his dad in him. He likes to, to code. Um, but more importantly, regarding this topic, I, I've worked from home home for six years. And with that, uh, it came with a lot of struggles and a, a lot of opportunity, actually, good and bad. Um, so, uh, you know, kind of talk about my experience with that tied in to my suggestions for improving that situation for yourself. Um, so we're going to cover the advantages and disadvantages of working from home. Uh, how to manage your time effectively in this situation, time block, getting rid of distractions, um, keeping to a schedule, things of that nature. And then <clears throat> to have your environment set up to be really conducive to work. Now, not everybody has a home office. I certainly don't. Uh, and I didn't when I started doing this about six years ago. So uh, needless to say, I started on the couch, which wasn't uh, a great way to start off, especially after a few weeks, you notice that your back kind of ends up hurting, scrunched up on a couch. So I advise against that, but we'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> so working from home, right? Advantages, disadvantages. Uh, I'm here in Los Angeles, California. And with that, a huge advantage is going to be no commute. A lot of folks, you know, have over a half hour to drive to work and be in traffic and it takes time out of your day. So like huge benefit, you're going to gain so much more of your time back. Uh, can't say, you know, how much I love that side of it. Like that's, that's amazing. Also no dress code. You can choose to, uh, you know, wear whatever you want. A lot of folks, uh, you know, even for meetings are just going to be dressed from the waist up. Right. Um, you could maybe throw a load of laundry in and go to the grocery store when it's less busy, you know, uh, you could have Netflix on in the background. There's like so many things you start, like your heads are spinning of what I can do and what we can do here uh, at home. And that's all great, but some of those have, are kind of a double-edged sword, right? Um, so there's some disadvantages with that. Like, uh, you know, no commute, but you're not going anywhere. You're not really seeing anybody. So there's no, you know, human interaction in that traditional sense. Of course, we have digital interaction, our phones, we're, we're tied to those devices. So there's definitely communication, but we missed that, hey, how are you doing today? And that just seeing somebody, seeing a smile back at you, you know, we don't see that often. And now, you know, with Zoom and everything, we do see it sometimes, but still not an opportunity to just say, hey, hey, Jim, that was, that was a great job you did, you know, just there. You know, you can't do things like that these days. You have to send that in a message, which is, a little less impactful. Um, it can be hard to stay motivated also. You're at home. There's plenty of things uh, like those things I mentioned before uh, to distract you. Um, and it's easy to get distracted. You get pulled in a lot of directions. You know, things uh, you might have folks you live with, you might have kids, you might have a dog uh, who constantly wants your attention. All of those probably will. Or, uh, you know, a roommate or, uh, you know, a significant other. The, possibilities are endless with what can distract you. Um, so, you know, we want to talk about focusing on things like that and how to do so. 
because while it may seem like a good idea to you know have Netflix on in the background or go to the grocery store when it's less busy during the day, but it, it's it's really necessarily not the best idea, especially having Netflix on in the background because you aren't going to be as focused, you aren't going to be as productive, and that leads me to my next point: is you want to be able to manage your time. You want to really focus in and get your work done. Um, and you want to do that by prioritizing and scheduling yourself. So one of the things that really helped me because you know years ago when I started doing this, like I mentioned, I started on a couch and you know oftentimes I had a roommate this home and like talk to him you know intermittently and stuff like that. And it's very hard to get things done in a timely manner that way. You think you're getting things done in, in, a, in a great way, but oftentimes the results worse than if you were just focusing on one thing. Um, and not being distracted. So you want to prioritize and set up your day and give yourself a schedule to stay to. I mean, it's great to be able to work at all hours of the day, um, but it's better to do things in blocks and to do things to one thing at a time. You want to focus all of your attention on it and therefore not make as many mistakes and not, uh, you know, be, be quicker about getting things done. Uh, and one of the things you can do is you can set up a schedule for yourself. You can schedule your day out and we'll get into an example of that. Uh, but before you do that, you need to take a step back. And what I do in the morning is I take a step back and I prioritize uh, my day. I take a look at what I need to do and I figure out where I need to fit those into my schedule and how I prioritize. Um, and this is going to come into, you know, throughout the day as well is like this. I look at this chart. I don't know if any of you've seen this before, but uh, oftentimes, if you take a, a look at something, uh, it has a few, a few ways you can look at it, where it'll be urgent and important, and something can be, you know, urgent and not important, or it can be not urgent and not important, right? So if we can categorize these things this way, we're able to really see what we need to do and what we need to focus on. So, <clears throat> There are going to be things throughout your day that seem a certain a certain way. They seem urgent, and, and they are urgent, but they may not be important, right? So you don't want to be pulled away by that. So let's take a look at this uh, real quickly. So if we look at the first block, right, we have that right up there where my finger gets cut off. Uh, you have urgent and important. These are going to be things where you get customer questions coming in, problems, deadlines, things like that nature, things that absolutely have to be met, right? These are usually timely, very urgent, and then important that they roll out because if not, something uh, terrible will happen or, you know, something of that nature. So very, very important. Now, there's going to be things that, that are urgent. You know, someone maybe sending you an email like, hey, this or someone giving a phone call, hey, this. And of course, there are some of those that are urgent and important, but oftentimes, uh, you know, they're going to seem urgent, but if you really sit back and think about it, they're not important. Um, and this is, it goes for like some meetings and some emails and some phone calls. Um, they, they seem so urgent, like, hey, can you meet right now? Um, but maybe it's not so important to meet right now this second. You know, it's, it's important to remember your schedule and your time and your success. Uh, so you need to push that off and say, all right, well, perhaps we meet a little bit later because you're focusing right now on another task. So you need to think about those things because um, people will you know, call you, and email you and, and chat you uh, very often. And the, the, the sense of urgency can be kind of misleading and can pull you in different directions and make it challenging for you to focus on the task at hand, therefore causing uh, an effect that is going to be detrimental to your work. Um, and then we have a category, you know, something that's not urgent, uh, but important. So this is going to be something like, you know, strategy, planning ahead, in, improvement, right? It's something that's like, <laughs> this is an interesting example, but a personal example, right? Um, something that's important, but not urgent is brushing your teeth, right? Like if you are brushing your teeth, it's important to brush your teeth every single day. But if you miss one day of not brushing your teeth, yeah, people may not want to get close to you and not want them to tell you secrets, but essentially, you know, it's not, your teeth aren't going to fall out tomorrow. So it's not urgent, but 
so you might fall into the habit of, oh yeah, well, you know, since it's not urgent, I mean, it is important, but you know, nothing, I'm not feeling an effects like that. And that's a similar thing to like planning ahead and you know, getting some strategies and focusing on new opportunities for the future. While it's very important, it doesn't need to be happening right now, like, you know, getting back to these emails and these meetings and, and these phone calls. Um, but actually you wanna spend a lot of time in this category. You want to really focus on brushing your teeth every day. You want to make sure you do those things. So I say, you know, you need to brush your teeth every day. You need to focus on, you know, things that are important, even if they're not urgent. You need to focus on those important things um, and make sure you incorporate them into your day because it's easy to not when it's not urgent, especially when you're in a remote situation due to what's been going on in the world. Um, and then, of course, we have the last category, which is not urgent, not important, which you know, it's going to be like net surfing, gossiping, social media, all that stuff that's not really uh, you know, related to the task at hand. So you don't really have to focus on that category at all. Of course, we all do and we all will. Um, but stay away from that corner uh, with those types of things. <laughs> I would say focus on urgent and important and not urgent and important. And of course, you have to do things that are urgent and not important. You can't ignore these things. But, you know, sometimes you, you don't want, you know, someone to you know, send you an email and then just because someone just sent you an email and you saw it pop up in your email box, you're going to get pulled away from brushing your teeth, right? Because if you do that, you might not brush your teeth. And then after a day, you're okay. But after three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, a year, two years, you're not going to have any teeth left. So you've got a plan for the future in that sense. Um, so with that in mind, you need to prioritize your day. You need to think about that. So getting a schedule going, you know, you can and I suggest you do this, you fill out your entire calendar. You put everything on there that you need to do and you get a schedule going. Now, you may say, hey, Dave, well, people need to schedule meetings with me uh, and, or meetings for me. And, you know, they're gonna see all this on my calendar, but, you know, there's gonna be an open time and sometimes I need to meet at certain times. That's great. And there's actually a feature for that, right? So you can have things time blocked, for instance, <clears throat> Priority number one, you could have as actually free time. So people could, it's on your calendar, but people can schedule during it. So if you have some kind of integration with something that books appointments for you, technically you could still get booked appointments in that space. So no worries, just set it as not actually busy, but you are, uh, but it's important to keep sometimes blocked off as busy for the things that you absolutely need to do during that time, such as those meetings that are happening and things like that. But as you see here in my schedule, um, I have everything like, okay, I'm gonna get up, walk my dog, drink some coffee, work out. It's important to stay active, especially since our commutes are now just really short and there's no even walking up office stairs or anything like that. So you need to move your body. Uh, and important to stay in the routine of showering and eating during these times. Um, you know, it's oftentimes, you know, I can eat, you know, whenever, but you wanna stay on that consistent schedule, keep the energy going and, and be ready and feel good, feel good to start your day. So I highly suggest showering. Um, I know it's easy to fall into the trap of not in this, this day and age, right? You're not going anywhere, oh, you know, but staying that routine helps, you know, when you wake up, helps you feel like you're ready to start the day. Um, and then I, you know, time block out some time to check emails. It's respond to emails in the morning. Uh, and then I prioritize my day, set up these priorities. Now I might fit priority one, priority two with different tasks I have to do that day. So just depending on what I have to do, spend that time. And of course, uh, some of those are free times where you can have essentially people still book meetings. So those get switched up and then you readjust. But the important thing is to make sure it's on your calendar for the day. You focus solely on that. And then again, I don't check my emails again until a little bit later in the morning. So with that, you know, oftentimes, you know, any kind of email is, you don't need to respond to it that very second. Of course, it depends on the industry that you're in and things like that. But um, when I've been in positions before where I've gotten 300 plus emails a day. So if I were to answer those emails as they came in, I wouldn't be able to do anything else at all. I would just be like, all right, I'm going to start working on something. Oh, I got an email. All right, let me just start. Hit. Oh, okay. Fin answer that email. Okay, let me get back to the, oh, nope, I got an email right there. It, it is not feasible, right? So <clears throat> I would just sit down, answer all the emails, le let it be for a bit, and then do it later. Very, very important. You can focus on the task at hand. 
do not want to be distracted. And this goes for things like, you know, getting notifications on your phone and everything like that. If I'm in a, you know, an important meeting, phone goes away. Do not want to be distracted for that. You don't want to be sitting there looking at the phone. You know, you don't want to sit there every two seconds. Oh, my watch went off. Watch, watch went off again. You want to keep your attention. You want to make sure everything is accounted for. You don't make any errors and you'll get more done in less time that way. Uh, so then, you know, make time to, you know, eat lunch, walk your dog again, if you have a dog, of course, and then some other priorities. And then of course, wrap things up for the rest of the day. Just schedule the time and really dedicate it to that time, you know, hold yourself accountable. If you don't, you won't do any of these things. So you need to say, all right, well, it's, you know, it's 530. You need to work out. You need to get up and start moving. If it's, it's something and then you'll get it done and you'll get in the habit and it'll be great and you'll feel a lot better. You know, um, another thing you can change is your environment. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of folks don't have an office space necessarily. They don't have another room in their home now that they're working uh, there and there's going to be distractions and things coming in. Uh, do the best that you can to set up a really a space that's separated. You know, you want to have something that you're not distracted by anybody else coming in or anything like that. So if you have that ability, I would highly suggest you do that so you can just focus in on the work. You want to uh, separate it from work and home because you, you don't want to be sitting there and then having that feeling of, oh, well, I need to clean my kitchen. You see the kitchen, I'm going to clean it. And then you have these thoughts in your head and you want to go do that. And on the other side, you don't want to be trying to relax at night, you know, and just taking your time because it's very important to have time to refresh, especially working from home. You have this uh, des des desire to really work and work because it's right there. You can see it. You can see your computer setup maybe. And if you see it, you're thinking about it. And then if you're watching TV, you're not really thinking about relaxing and watching the show you love, you're thinking about, oh, well, I could do that. And, and the next thing you know, you're getting back on there and then you're not recharged for the next day. And you really want to have that separation, even though you're having in the same space. Ideally, a completely different room, right? <laughs> Where you go in and it's like going to work. But if you don't have that, you want to maybe put away your computer. You want to, don't, you don't want to look at it. You want to put it in an area. You know, I, I've had people say like, this is great. Like, now in my room, I have a, uh, you know, a slide closet. My desk is in there. I open it to work. It's right there. And I face, you know, they have the, you know, the walls are behind them. So they're just focused on their computer screen, nothing else. It's almost like a cubicle setup. They can really narrow in. They're not thinking about anything else going on. It's in their bedroom. And then when it's all said and done, they close it and they're not thinking about it because they don't see it. They know it's there, but if you don't see it, out of sight, out of mind, right? Also take care of your body. You want to set up an ergonomic environment. You don't want to sit on the couch like I did for a little while. I didn't have a, a desk to sit at and my kitchen table chairs were not comfortable. So I was sitting on the couch and mind you, this is an older couch. So I like sink in and I'm sitting there, you know, all curled up. And at first you sit down and you're like, ah, I'm sitting on a couch and working. This is great. And a couple hours go by and you know, your back really starts getting to you. So, uh, definitely set up something where you get an ergonomic setup where you're sitting properly and what that looks like uh you know even if you're at a desk right if we look at the image here uh we don't want to we'll start from the ground up we don't want to have our feet let me move my head out of the way uh our feet bent like that it will shorten our hamstrings and then we'll be even tighter than we were supposed to be because our muscles will be used to being that length the entire day and then when you go to straighten your legs, you're going to feel that tightness at the end of the day. And it's going to cause all kinds of problems, lower back problems, everything like that. So you want to kick those feet out, <clears throat> straighten them out. Also, you want some back support, some lumbar support. You want to be upright. You don't want to be slouched over. That's also terrible for your back, upper back, lower back, all of that. Um, you want to have your shoulders back. And then also, you don't want to be reaching up. You want to keep them down. And you don't want to be any of this forward or up here, because again, they'll shorten your bicep and you'll be used to this and you know, your, your length will be shortened. So you want to have it down nice like they have here on the right photo. And then you don't want to look down at your monitor. I actually think this should be a little higher in this photo, actually. 
you want to look straight ahead, just like you know, if you're sitting down, you're looking directly at eye level. You don't have to bend your head down and then have this little kink in your neck. You know, you can feel it. I'm sure some of you who maybe spend some time on your phone, you know, on certain days, if you're on your phone a lot and you're down here, you can feel that after a day. Um, <laughs> and certainly if you hold your phone up here to try to compensate for that, right, you're going to feel that in your arms. So <laughs> ideally you want to get a good setup. Um, so here we have an example right here. Uh, as someone who's a walking desk, and at first glance, folks are going to be like, hey, Dave, this is, this is great. He's moving and he's walking and, you know, he's ready to work. Um, there's a few things I notice with this photo that I'm not a fan of. First of all, the, you know, walking while working, I've done it. I've had a walking desk and you start to sweat after about an hour of walking, you know? So it, it, regardless of how fast you're going, it starts to happen just a little bit, especially in that kind of outfit, right? And in those shoes, in those business shoes, that's going to be tough. So <laughs> you don't want to do that if you're going to get one of these walking desk situations. But also, if you notice, he's looking down. He's looking down right at the computer. And again, you want that to be eye level. You don't want to have to bend down and look at your computer. If you get a standing desk, you need something to prop your computer up. You do not want to look down at it because, again, that's going to give you that neck tension and your back is going to be in a bad position, your upper back, and, and you'll feel that at the end of the day. So think about that. Also, if you're standing some comfy shoes, something like a mat to stand on, something like that, uh, you want to get out and move around as well. Um, so definitely consider all these things. <laughs> now, I just wanted to go over, meet Weavy a little bit, a little bit of, uh, of Weavy. Um, you know, we're uh, folks, two to separate offices. We have one, um, you know, in Venice and one in Malmo, Sweden, and uh, a great team of folks. The entire team minus, you know, one individual is in that photo on the left. And, you know, what we do uh, just quickly is we uh, have a framework that, and our goal is to have, you know, the most comprehensive and easy to implement uh, full stack embeddable in-app messaging and collaboration tool set. And with what's going on these days and keeping people productive, that's why we you know, have it designed that way to keep people working and productive and not having to jump in a million different places at once and getting distracted. All the information is right there in apps. So we provide that for you know, software companies. So things like integrations to Dropbox, Google Drive, file collaboration, posts and feeds for conversations, comments, messaging, notifications, assigning tasks, all things to you know keep people more productive you know in a sense like time blocking where you're focused on one thing this way if you're focused on one environment you don't need to go look in you know your gmail cloud or on your computer for certain files you know companies that utilize us have these files organized within their apps so it's very easy to stay organized and productive just like you would stay organized and productive through your day i uh, don't need to go scour your computer or various means of communications like email for uh, a conversation that you had about something. It's all right there. Um, kind of what that looks like would be uh, this. So um, this is going to be an easy to implement framework uh, of example of feeds uh, and files and then tasks. So, you know, you know, we're not uh, here specifically to talk about today. If you have more questions regarding that, feel free to reach out to me, uh, Dave at Weavy.com. Um, but this is, you know, just a little background about what we do and how we kind of incorporate all that into, uh, you know, how we make things, just making people productive and efficient and uh, happy. You know, it's, it's tough. Um, and if there are any questions, feel free to list them in the q and I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, I hope you all try this out. I urge you to try, you know, time blocking if there's something you're not doing already and really give it a fair shot for, for a day and, and really do that and really think about prioritizing your day. Like, what am I doing that's maybe, you know, important but not urgent that I should be focusing on? Um, or what am I doing that's urgent but not important that I should probably not let steal my attention so much? I should maybe put away my phone during certain meetings, or I should put it away while I'm even working on things. Focus on one thing at a time. Don't have my email open. Try these things out. Try separating them. And, and you know, let me know. Even if you want to just email me like, hey, you know, I tried it and it helps. It'd be great to get that feedback. Um, feel free to contact me. Always happy to chat. Certainly about 
making sure we move and take walks and things of that nature throughout the day. Definitely want to move around, even if you don't have a dog to walk. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so if there aren't any questions, uh, you know, I appreciate you joining. I hope you take something away from this. And, you know, uh, one thing I do want to add um, is the human interaction piece. You know, it's, uh, it's been it's tough times, right? You know, if some of us are not used to not seeing people for a while, you, know, you can get lonely and stuff like that. I encourage you know, to, to you know, reach out to your coworkers, maybe schedule something in the day where everybody just, you know, has that maybe not important, not urgent kind of chat and just catches up maybe daily for 15 minutes you know fa factor that in so you still keep that relationship right could be nice uh just food for thought right we all need uh friends during this time and we're not seeing many people but yeah great to have you guys stay healthy stay out there and please do uh try this out have a great one